Jester's Garage presents Chop on a 38 Chevy Coupe Wedge Style at the Jalopy Shop. Stay tuned. So today on Jester's Garage, we're working on the Rick House 38 Chevrolet. This car came to us through Hell's Gate Hot Rods. Uh, Andy up at Hell's Gate Hot Rods and the boys, they're building a, an amazing chassis to go underneath this car. Rick has had this car since he was 14 years old, bought it from his dad. Just retired, age 65, he's ready to get this car on the road. Rick brought us a bunch of pictures of 38s he liked. One of the things he wanted to do, he wanted to chop the top a little bit, he wanted to lay back the windshield a little bit, and so that's what we're in the middle of right now. We took some of his pictures, we loaded them up into CAD, kind of dissected what had been done. We decided what we wanted to do was just lay the windshield back an inch and a half, and then bring the top down to meet it. So it's gonna be kind of a wedge chop. We cut the windshield out all the way across the cowl, as you can see. We cut most of the way through the A-pillar, leaving just the back section of it attached. I left it connected right here on the inside of the A-pillar, but I did cut up the dash and all the way across. That allowed the windshield to pull up and away from the cowl to get to the position that we wanted to end up at. As that rotated off the back of the A-pillar, it opens up this gap right here. The plan is, is we'll actually take this section of the windshield and we'll sink it right back down into the cowl, which will make the windshield wider in the center. This middle section of the windshield back down to the cowl so we don't have this hanging way up high. That's the theory, we'll see if it works. We hinged it back an inch and a half at the top. That left top of the roof sitting up here in the air and long and so the next thing we did is we came back to the b pillar and we took a, a slice right across the b pillar and a slice across the c pillar all the way into underneath the back window with the windshield below the top of the roof we couldn't get the top of the roof to come past the windshield to come down in alignment and so what we did is we just took a section out of the door jam right here and that allows everything to come past it until we get the sheet metal to line up. And so cutting the A-pillar here, in order to lean it back, we cut all the way through the cowl, all the way through the top of the dash, lean the A-pillar back, hinging it on the back of the A-pillar. That keeps everything square, keeps everything true to where it needs to be. And actually what we did was we took a piece of square tubing, welded it on here, we pulled it back to this bracing that we've got on the inside of the car to keep everything square while we've got it all cut apart. You got a hinge right here, is what your thought is? Yeah, so what we're gonna do is kick this top up. We got enough coordination to do it. Here. out of my way and then I've got a measurement between this point and this point 27 inches and so I'll make that point where that'd be 25 and a half inches and I'll take Why? a rod so we're gonna tip it back inch and a half. Well that's what you're all yeah on. and I'll take a rod and weld it between here and here to hold it there and then I go to the center of the other side make sure it's exactly even. And then you just gotta make the roof fit it again. Then I gotta start bringing the roof down to fit it. And you're gonna be done in like an hour. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> it looked like that on the video. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So because we hinged it back right here, that brings this point up, which we expected. And so I think what we'll do is slide this point straight down the plane of the glass to where it starts to touch back into here. It'll make the window taller right in the center, mm -hmm. but this won't be so high. Otherwise you'd have this huge swoop here that would look funny from the front. Yeah, yeah, as soon as I get the top all tied in so things quit moving, 
We'll probably cut it right where your finger is. The glass is gonna go almost like that. Yeah. And out, out here. Yeah, yeah. Leave the top the way it is and just let the bottom, bottom come out. Right, yeah. Subject to change once we get it out and get a look at it. But yeah, I think we'll just slide this down on the plane of the glass that until it's the same height. And they, they actually I measured out in the center of this windshield here was narrower than it is back out here from the factory. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. it'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. Mm -hmm. the easy part now the work begins <laughs> so all this whole top right now is just hinged on that sheet metal right below the back window and all the bracing inside is holding everything square we'll get there this is kind of rough down at this point. once we got that pulled back the inch and a half we locked it in right there just tack welded it we knew that's right where we needed to be. Next thing we did was went right through the B pillar and the C pillar and made a slice all the way underneath the back window. We just kept running our cutoff wheel through that. Each time we run the cutoff wheel through that, we could lower the top of the car just a little bit. As we shot through that, it probably took five eighths of an inch out of the C pillar. Don't really know. We just kind of just kept going until we got it just right, until we got a nice flow across the top of the car. Once we got the top of the roof laying down on the top of the windshield, we was able to come up here and scribe that line onto the top of the roof and make a cut that was real precise right across there and then reintroduce the roof skin to the top of the windshield with a bunch of tack welds. Now you can see we've got it welded fully. It still needs some shape. We've got to get this Top of the roof jam to flow into the A-pillar seamlessly. And then what we'll do is we'll take this section, we'll make some patterns on it. And with those patterns we'll use to cut the hole just right so we can get this piece back in and still make the continuity of this curve come back into the A-pillar. Oh, okay. This has got to change a little bit obviously because it was a sharper curve because of where this was at. Now it's gonna to have to be a little more gradual curve. <laughs> So it's been a couple, three weeks since we, at least three weeks, three weeks to a month, something yeah. like that, I think. So uh, why don't you tell me where you've been and what you've been doing? And so in order to get the windshield all welded back in at the same plane, we took and actually made a metal windshield. We'll pop that in here in a minute and show it to you. And it came in, it was the original shape, and we was able to cut that apart and slide down the distance we needed to bring the windshield frame down to the cowl itself. At that point, we're able to clico that piece in and then build the cowl back together. Uh, I guess we did also cut out the uh, cowl vent and got it filled. And granted, all this stuff's just kind of roughed in right now. It still needs a lot of metal finishing, but it's starting to take the shape. This is the windshield, the dummy windshield that we made. It's broken the metal, just a piece of, I think this is 14 gauge or something like that. But the idea is we want to be able to move this lower section of the cowl down keep it on this same plane. If we got that moved forward an eighth of an inch or back an eighth of an inch, the glass guy's gonna absolutely hate us. We don't need that. And so, in order to stiffen that up, we made a little stiff frame on the back of it there that keeps everything twisting. And so we know that this lays down flat on the, the uh, fabrication table, so it's gonna be good there. Just just kind of a, a guide that we made to- And that's a broke up. piece, right? It is broke. It's one sheet of 14 gauge broke in the middle where the windshield will be broke. Just kind of clean goes in. Um, kind of handy tool here. So, and it kind of reveals a little bit of what the the profile of this car is going to be too. All this bracing frame is here is just to keep that 14 gauge from twisting a little bit. 14 gauge, even though it's pretty heavy and that big of a piece, it's pretty easy to pull it, a, tweak it maybe an eighth of an inch or something like that. And just to prevent that, we welded these on the back side. It just keeps everything stiff and in line. That break in the middle stiffens it substantially, and then those two pieces finish the rest of it. Another thing we did, top of this dash right here, 
course it was sticking up because we pushed the, the, the windshield lip down into the cowl a little bit. It was sticking up. And so we just reshaped the top of the dash, pushed it down, had to make a little filler strip to go in there, and got it all welded in. It's, it's coming out nice. We also had to take and make fillers up inside of here. Some of that is the old piece trimmed down, some of it's new metal. But it's, it's starting to come in. We're, yeah. We're doing amazing things. Yeah, it's <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing, man. <laughs> you can see in the videos where we had a piece cut out of here, and all we did there was took the original piece and took a paper pattern that fit the hole. We took that paper pattern, we rotated it around that, that missing piece until we got the right shape and cut it out and inleted it in there. This side here is still just kind of roughed in. Nate this morning was getting some of the peaks and valleys out of it, but it's starting to get its shape where it needs to be. The uh, rain gutter still needs to be spliced back in. In the corners of the doors here, as that windshield, as the A-pillar came back, we had to change the shape through here. And of course, in order to make that happen in a smooth transition, we had to take several pie cuts out of here. Wow, this is all cut through here? It's been cut all the way through back to about here, wow. and then pulled down and re-welded. There's still some shaping that needs to be done. What he's doing right here is getting the, the front of the door edge to meet the A-pillar as it should. It's gonna take a little bit of filler rod along the edge there. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's coming out, and the shape is looking nice. This reveal's got a nice transition to it. So while it still needs finished up, the shape's in there, it's gonna be good. Moving on back from the A pillar, right now Nate's been working on this and he's got the top of the door frame Clicoed in, just got a couple of washers there, hold it in place with the good gaps. And so next step is, is to trim this last piece of the door frame down. And we gotta get the right curve to make everything flow from this piece to this piece as we need to. That's gonna take a little bit of fiddly work, but I, I believe the shape's in there. We just gotta, just gotta find it. Over here on the passenger side, we've gotten a little bit farther along on the drip edge. Um, this shape right here is starting to look pretty good, it's starting to flow through nicely. Um, we just, same thing, just a paper pattern on the old drip edge and welded it back in after a little bit of trimming. Down here in the A-pillar, when we pulled the A-pillar down, it made a little pucker up into here, just the natural shapes of things. And so we had, to, we had to shrink all this metal down to get it to flow up out of the cowl nicely. And that's working out really well. So got to weld up the uh, drip edge there. And this one here actually shows where you did some slicing. Yeah, you can see we, first thing we did was we cut out a whole piece, just took out the whole corner. And then we laid the A-pillar back where we wanted it. And then we put the piece back in with a bunch of pie cuts in it. And so we could just slowly bring that around to bring that radius a little tighter. Mm -hmm. This car is going to end up, I believe, with uh, one piece side windows. And so that'll make that quite a lot easier. Should look good too. It sure has an aggressive look right here. Yeah, it yeah. looks fast just sitting here it, already. Yeah, so we talked a little bit about that. It's got the kind of squint eye, like it's just yeah. down and angry and ready it to is. go. It is, it looks angry. It's, it's going to be a really sweet car. Be interesting to see what he comes up with for color. Back here in the back corner of this car, I think you remember we we cut this car all the way down to right about here, and that way the whole top could hinge down below the back window. We've got that all welded up. There was actually a factory weld seam with lead over it right here. They've been gas welded, and it was kind of down in the valley. We just planished it up, and we're starting to finish the metal finishing on it. It's coming out nice. There's been a lot of stretching, a lot of shrinking, but it's gonna get there. Both sides look pretty decent. Um, and in the middle, below the window, there's no cut at all, is there? No, no, this is just the factory stuff. We just hinged it down between this point on the car and the same point on the other side. Just hinged it down. It's not much by the time you get back here. But that worked out real well. Kept the top on square while we was doing our surgery. Happy with how that came out. Hank Sr. in the background. Over the hill, 
I think Laura can yeah. place it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You getting there, huh? Getting close. Yeah. Oh, I'm not your boss. 